God tells me that marriage is not my vocation. I was really upset. For me, Schoenstatt was my vocation. Mother Mary, Father Kent and Nick, and the shrine, and this has always been a beautiful triangle that I have been living inside. My name is Sister Lisette. I'm a Schoenstatt sister of Mary. I was born in Germany and uh, during the Second World War. And as my father was in war, I was the only child then, my mother had to look after me in a city that was very badly damaged by the bombs of the, uh, of the people that damaged the enduring war. After war, my father came back from, um, he was imprisoned and he came back and then I had another little sister. And so we grew up in a big city in Mainz in Germany. Because of the situation there, we had all these uh, damaged houses and it was just a, a very different way of growing up. But I, I managed well and we had school and I went to the, um, uh, primary school there and I studied the after school to become a accountant and I was very much involved in the um, uh, youth work in our parish. I was a girl guide and I was the diocesan leader of the girl guides in my diocese. In our parish we had Schoenstatt youth and I had no relationship with these people because I couldn't make them out. They were friendly, they were happy, and they were very, very pious. And I wasn't that kind of pious person. And so my girl guide friends and all this, we didn't really get on with the Schoenstatt youth. But our chaplain, he was a Schoenstatt priest. And he instructed our leaders' meetings with the spirituality of Schoenstatt, which I didn't know it was Schoenstatt. But I agreed with what with this ideal of self-education and self-formation and love for Our Lady, and I had no idea it was Schoenstatt. One day I got very sick, and this priest gave me a little booklet called To Be Heroic Today. And as I was, I was five weeks in flat in my bed, and I, in these five weeks, I, I read that, and I thought, this is incredible. This is something, this is holiness I can strive for. This is holiness I can really shape my life accordingly. And when I was well again, I had to return the booklet, but I had written down where it comes from, so I went to a bookshop and ordered it. And then the ladies, oh, this comes from Schoenstatt. And I fell out of all the clouds. Schoenstatt, how about Schoenstatt producing something like this? But I ordered it and I got to know Schoenstatt through this little book, which is, uh, was a very small abbreviation of the book called Workday Sanctity, written by one of the Schoenstatt sisters. And from then moment on, I started to understand Schoenstatt the way of education, the way of inner freedom, the way of being able to make up your own mind to do what you want to do because God wants you to do it and not because uh, of, of any other reason. And I had a very incredible um, experience with making Schoenstatt my own. As I got to know Schoenstatt in a very deep and personal way, 
at the same time, I got to know my boyfriend and realizing that this man was given to me by God and we were a perfect match, we really got on very well and we decided to get married. And it was just three months before our engagement that I went with him to his family to, have, uh, to, to get to know the family. And they had a, a huge farm and there was a guest house and I, I slept in that guest house. And in that night, I just could not sleep. God tells me that marriage is not my vocation. I was really upset and I didn't know what to do because I needed to tell him, I needed to tell my family, I needed to just cancel our relationship and our, our engagement and everything. And it took quite a while till I had the courage to do this because I had also no guarantee who am I? Can I be loyal to a vocation in a religious life? This was very difficult because I didn't even tell my parents till after the 25th wedding anniversary. I said, I will not marry my boyfriend. I will become a sister. For them, this was just disastrous. That was in 1965 and that was in November and they stopped talking to me. I, it was very difficult. And I only had to trust God that what I do is the right thing to do. When I realized that marriage is not my vocation, and that I had to give my life to Schoenstatt. I had to question which of the Schoenstatt communities am I going to join? The women communities as well as the priest communities are secular institutes. And as such, they have a different way of life, a different lifestyle. And I thought if I enter the ladies of Schoenstatt, they live a consecrated life in the midst of the world either with a family or close to the workplace, but they don't live in community. And the Schoenstatt sisters, they live a life in community. And I thought the benefit of my life, giving my life to Schoenstatt, would be that I could do this full time without having to uh, look for my other needs that I need in my everyday life. And this was actually my decision to enter the Schoenstatt sisters, so that I could work for Schoenstatt full time without having to look after all the domestic kind of work that not naturally belongs to a, a, a living life. And so I uh, entered the Schoenstatt sisters. We are a secular institute. That means the institute that is, um, we don't take vows, but we have a consecration to Our Lady and a contract with our community. It is a, a contract, uh, a, com a consecration that we enter when we become Schoenstatt sisters. And there is various styles or various times uh, in our life as a sister till we make the final contact consecration after eight and a half year of um, study and being introduced into the sister's family's life. And then we, is when we become this, this ring that is in our final contact consecration. And I was very fortunate at that time to experience Father Kentenich back again from uh, exile in Schoenstatt. And we became a very close relationship with Father Kentenich. And it was then that through him knowing me and I knew him, he asked me if I would be interested to go um, to Australia. I was not meant to enter the mission, but I was only entering the Schoenstatt sisters in Germany. But then because of him saying this, I agreed and I looked into the possibilities then with, the, with my community to be then uh, sent to Australia. And this was a, a very special thing. And I, I felt very privileged to have Father Kentenich asking me would you like to go? And, and then, yes, I would like to go. And then after a few weeks, and I, 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 could, I, couldn't, I didn't think I could do it. So I talked to him and said, Father Kentenich, I don't think I can go to Australia. I, I, I don't think I can manage. And then he said to me, oh, well, then I give you four weeks time 
to reconsider. And not to not that I have asked you this, but just consider it once more and whatever decision you make, I will take. And it will be very special. So I had four weeks to pray and I did. And then on the 12th, on the 8th of December, Our Lady's birthday, I decided then freely, freely to go to Australia. On the 12th of September, I wrote a letter and I brought it in the house where he was living, near where I, where I was stationed. And on the 14th of September, we had the opportunity to go and see him and bring a beautiful basket with, with fruit and flowers. And I was part of them. And I had written, and I did not know whether he would have read my letter because Father Kentenick would get many, many letters. So I was standing with the three sisters and there were many other people in that room. And Father came in and he walked around and he looked around and then he saw me. And he went towards me and he took both my hands and he said, thank you so much for the letter. And the next day he died. This was such an experience that his last moment on earth was the joy he expressed for me making my free decision to come to Australia. So after I arrived in Australia, I did not speak English. So I needed to go to various courses at university to make my university entrance exam in English and different classes that were offered. And I took them all because I needed to speak this language. And what was then very interesting was after a half year, after a semester of intensive English studies, I was transferred to the German community. And I, I needed to go back to German again because I needed to look after the German migrants in, in, in Sydney. And I thought, this, this can't be true. This absolutely can't be true. And it was a very special time to work with the German-speaking migrants. From then on, I was always um, working for young people in the movement, for youth work, and for different, different works and camps and uh, um, reflection days and things like this is what I did in, in Margot from then on. This must have been from 1973. Young people experience the same gifts that I experienced when I got to know Schoenstatt in Germany as a young girl and the, the strength from the self programs of self-education and self-formation. And I was able to pass that on. And it was very, very special. And I enjoyed doing this kind of work. In between, I had, we had our other uh, times of education. We call this tertianships, the first tertianship, and then the second tertianship, when we then finally received our, we made the final, our contact consecration and received the ring as becoming now forever um, belonging and part of our Schoenstatt sisters family. We have many, many different fields of work where sisters engage. We have a pastoral council sisters. We have now a sister Helen. She is working with the Aborigine people here in Perth. And this is a very beautiful kind of work. We have sisters that work then in the apostolate with the Pilgrim Mother Shrine to have for the coordinators. We have also family groups here in, in Perth, and this is like everywhere. So we work for the enrichment of families that they can find strength and encouragement in their family life through Schoenstatt. So it's a very beautiful apostolate that the sisters engage in. And I'm sure we have sisters that work in the domestic field, like, and I do a little bit of this now too. And it is beautiful to be able to put a nice meal on the table. You know, and to make sure that the people enjoy that. So I, I enjoy this as well. In our community, we have various, various uh, uh, activities, various uh, uh, em employment with the, with diocese. We have one sister, she's a co uh, RE coordinator for the diocese of Parramatta and they've sort various things. We have also sisters that are still mainly are studying in the Philippines. And we have a, a, a retreat center there and a shrine. So we are always involved in apostolate.
So when I then came to uh, Western Australia, I finished my degree. I had a preschool here and with the preschool, I also did a lot of adult formation because children and families belong together. And having the children being happy means, meant we had the families being happy too. So we had mothers groups, uh, formation groups for mothers, Schoenstatt mothers groups, family groups established at that time. I had a lot of um, youth groups here. And in Schoenstatt we have single sex groups. We don't have the mix, but we have uh, young men groups, boys groups and girls groups. And within that there is a, to our understanding, a, a better formation possible in the, in the single sex uh, atmosphere. And this was also, we had camps together and not with the boys, but camps and, and, and re retreats and, and uh, formations like this. It was very, very much enjoyed. And then we were apostolic within the Armadale uh, Council, helping along with the uh, carols by candlelight, with all our young people and children taking part in the carols for candlelight. It was just beautiful to, to be part of this. And so we did a lot of this um, helping along in the community as our outreach. And it was, um, we, we enjoyed that. We had also, we helped, the, the, the leaders helped a lot with family formation camps. So we had the youth leaders, there was then boys and girls together because there was then family. And uh, we organized the times that the parents had their formation and we looked after the children. And we had these camps in Jarrodale and they were always very, very special and beautiful. And the children enjoyed it. And this is important. When parents go on a, form, a religious formation camp and the children have not much to do, they find it boring and then they don't want to come. But we made it so interesting for them that we took some white water rafting and stuff like this. And it was really great. And uh, so we had always the formation camps so very, very blessed. There was a priest coming from Sydney to be with the families. And so we had Holy Mass, we had the Sacrament of Reconciliation, and we had Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, and it was very special. So these were always things that we also promoted in our, the, the, the religious, the, also the, the sacramental life. And this is what I'm actually doing here now. I, um, I conduct retreat days for children preparing for a sacrament. And I have the Reconciliation, for Holy Communion and Confirmation. And besides this, I also have high school students coming. And I um, take topics that the school asks me to, to take because I run this myself. I don't have teachers helping me. So they, they have to take what they get. <laughs> and uh, so this is the, with the high schools, but and pilgrimages, that I, I wait for uh, pilgrimages that come here. Now this pilgrimage coming on Saturday, they would like to hear something about God's mercy. And I've prepared a talk on turn your merciful eyes towards us. This is from the Salve Regina. And uh, this is then a, a talk I would like to uh, present to the group with some discussion and reflection on it. And um, to just be aware and always be conscious of how close God is to us because of his mercy. So I, I, I do this kind of work and other groups coming that take the center. Um, normally we would like to have an input to let them know about Schoenstatt or about the graces in the shrine. And that is an always very special. And so we have this place then um, open for different functions where we can invite people to come and make use of it. It's nice and big and beautiful with uh, facilities that are being able to be used by the people. I feel very privileged that God has called me to this way of life, to live in a religious community and to be able to um, give my life and my love to Jesus and to 
love Christ and to follow Christ and to serve Him through Our Lady. And then um, saying that we have never had an apparition of Mary, Father Kentnick would always say, but we are her apparitions. Wherever I am, you should encounter Mother Mary. And this is that image that we would like to produce in Schoenstatt, that we are this other Mary that can um, be present in this world through us. And through Our Lady, we will be then led to Christ. We will be able to combat all the difficulties that naturally come across our lives. And so I feel that is a, this is a very special gift. So in all the difficulties, or I haven't really had difficulties regards my vocation. So I can't really make up anything because <laughs> I didn't have any. Um, for me, Schoenstatt was my vocation, for, is my life. And with Schoenstatt, Mother Mary, Father Kendernick, and the shrine. And this has always been a, a beautiful triangle that I have been living inside. Turn back towards God. Rise up. <laughs>